Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we're going to discuss what's hit the news. The Yeddi Diaries caravan has published detailed extracts from what seems to be the handwritten notings on a diary of Mr. Yadurappa, the former Chief Minister of Karnataka. Parujai, you've been following this issue for a very long time. Partly because Gali Janardhan Reddy, who is the big money bags behind all of this in Karnataka, you've covered his various activities, including the illegal export of iron ore from that particular port in Bellicary Port. Bellicary port. Also, the links that Gali Janardhan Reddy had with Yadu Rappa and the BJP in Karnataka. It seems that Yaddi Diaries authenticate all these uh, claims. Yes, you know, uh, it confirms our worst suspicions. The period when these payments were allegedly made all pertain to the period when iron ore exports had peaked because demand for iron ore had peaked in China because of the Olympic Games. But I must say the journalists from Caravan, Athira Konikara and Nilina MS have done an amazing amount of work and it's, it's I, I, all kudos to Caravan to bring it out. Uh, and before one goes into uh, the implications of these diaries, let's summarize briefly for the benefit of uh, our viewers the highlights of what these, the Yeddi diaries reveal. These have been written by Yeddi Europa's own hand, confirmed, double-checked. Signed by him yes, every page. In Canada, in a diary where there's the state assembly, it was given to state assembly legislators in 2009. And interestingly, all these diaries have been with the income tax department from 2017 onwards. But, but the big but, payments. Yes. 1800 crore, over 1800 crore, the big amount of money, 1000 crore rupees to the Central Committee of the Bharatiya Janata Party. This is 2009. That's correct. All these payments have happened in early 2009, to be precise, 18th of January 2009. Okay? Mm. Same, same period of time, Arun Jaitley gets 150 crore, Nitin Gadkari gets 150 crore. Rajnath Singh, 100 crore, and the two senior leaders of the BJP, LK Advani and Murli Manohar Joshi, get 50 crore each. It has been further, the entries in the diary allege, claim that Mr. Yadurapa paid 10 crore rupees for the marriage of Mr. Gadkari's son, and that in over and above all these payments, a sum of 250 crore rupees was paid to unnamed judges and 50 crore rupees played to unnamed advocates. Now this is the big story. And Yadurapa was Chief Minister of Karnataka from May 2008 to July 2011. And all these diaries bear his signature. Interestingly, the Income Tax Department had shown this diary to the finance minister Arun Jaitley in August 2017. A year and a half ago, nothing seems to have been done about it. The income tax department or an official of the income tax department according to the report of Caravan had suggested there was need for further investigation by the enforcement directorate, but nothing has happened. Point of the other interesting issue, of course, apart from Janardhan Reddy's, shall we say, uh, links to Yadurappa and the rise of the Jan Bharatiya Janata Party. There is also this added issue that how were these diaries recovered by the income, income Tax Department? It seems to be from a raid on a Congress legislature's house. And this Congress legislator is none other than Mr. D.K. Shivakumar, supposed to be one of the richest politicians of its kind. And how this went from Mr. Yadurappa to the Income Tax Department and then via Mr. D.K. Shiv Kumar is quite an amazing story. So it's a copy of a diary. You know, we don't know who has the original, where it is. I mean, I mean, these things haven't been specified, we don't know. And this copy was in a raid of the Income Tax Department on Mr. Shiv Kumar's house. That raid happened in August 2017. 
if you will recall, Mr. Shiva Kumar was at that point of time in the news because he had taken a large number of legislators from Gujarat to a resort in near Bangalore at a time when there was talk that they would be bought over during the Rajya Sabha elections of the senior Congress leader Ahmed Patel. Mr. Ahmed Patel's election. Thereafter, Mr. Shiva Kumar's residence was raided. Now, according to this caravan article, what is very, very interesting is that there was a fight of sorts between the personal assistants of the late Anand Kumar, who was a member of parliament from Bangalore, K.S. Ishwarappa, a BJP leader, and Mr. Shiva Kumar to get hold of the diary. And apparently Mr. Anand Kumar had got hold of the diary, but because his relationship with Yadurappa was good, nothing came out of it. But the, the story is actually very, very complex. Yadurappa himself had complained to the Central Board of Direct Taxes against Shiva Kumar. And the Income Tax Department was part of the Central Board of Direct Taxes, which was headed at that time by Mr. Sushil Chandra, who had got, in fact, an extension. And Mr. Sushil Chandra currently is an election commissioner. So one possible construction, I'm not saying this is the truth, could be that the raid was also prompted by the fact that Shiv Kumar was sitting on this diary and it's an explosive diary. And that could be the reason for the CBDT raid as well. Or pure political vendetta. That here is a person who's the richest of a, a, a legislator, a, a Vidhayak, belonging to the Congress. And because he's so rich and he's so influential, and, and Karnataka is notorious for their MLAs changing sides, uh, uh, literally at the, uh, at the uh, exchange of a couple of briefcases. So this was not surprising. And what was very interesting is... But these amounts are not contained in briefcases. They are rather large. They are large, large. 150 crores and so on. But uh, or if uh, you want to compare it with today's uh, situation with the 2,000 rupee notes, maybe you won't require too many large briefcases. But very interesting. Mr. Yadurappa's so-called diary meticulously notes where the money came from and where the money went. Almost uh, like an accountant keeper diary, almost reminiscent of the Jain Hawala diaries and the, the Birla papers and the Sahara papers. Interestingly, among the people involved in these payments were three legislators who were found watching pornographic uh, uh, videos inside the legislator. They were picked up by the cameras. And, and very, very interestingly, the man behind it is Gali Janardhan Reddy. Behind the payments, all this, and Mr. Yadurappa acknowledges that he became chief minister thanks to Gali Janardhan Reddy. Because thanks to the money he got, he was able to win over legislators from the Congress and the Janta Dal Secular to become the chief minister. Now, he acknowledges that it was Gali Janardhan Reddy who was responsible for him becoming chief minister in these diaries. And Gali Janardhan Reddy was the kingpin behind the iron ore scam. You know, in the film, uh, the documentary film I made, it's called Blood and Iron. I mean, I say in Gali Janardhan Reddy, we, uh, there is a, it epitomizes the convergence of crime, business and politics. Gali Janardhan Reddy spent three years behind bars. And after he came out, he splurged on his daughter's wedding. And this was just after demonetization had been announced in November 2016. I mean, Bangalore has never seen so much being spent on a wedding. After that, of course, Mr. Kali Janathan Reddy had to spend another day behind bars for a small period of time. But the interesting part of the story is that when in 2011, the Lokayukta, the People's Ombudsman of Karnataka and Santosh Reddy had come out with this voluminous report indicting Yadurappa and Gali Janathan Reddy and kicking and screaming, Yadurappa put in his papers. He was compelled, he was forced to resign and he actually spent time behind bars in October of 2011. So what happened was after that, Yadurappa quit. He was dismissed from the party and he revived a party that had been set up by Padmanabha Prasanna Kumar. It was called the Karnataka Janata Paksh. And he remained, he was a rebel, he remained in that party until 
a little while before the 2014 Lok Sabha elections, when Mr. Narendra Modi and Amit Shah persuaded him to return to the BJP. And then you know he was the BJP's chief ministerial candidate. He became a chief minister for a short period of time. He didn't have the majority. And he's currently the leader of the opposition in Karnataka. It's an interesting issue that we have heard a lot about the Chaukidar campaign recently, but none of the Chaukidars seem to have woken up to the fact that this diary was there, various very senior Chaukidars' names were there, and no action was being taken. Did Yadurapa also declare himself to be a Chaukidar in this campaign of Chaukidari? I'm not so sure about it. All I can tell you is that there are all kinds of uh, unusual details in this diary, including his alleged marriage to the BJP member of parliament, Shobha Karandlaje, uh, which apparently went in a, a secret ceremony. And, and uh, when, um, when he, uh, the, when he was approached, when Shobha Karandlaje, uh, was uh, asked this question. She said, some mad people must have written this diary and then she hung up. Now, what is very interesting is that the people concerned. I already mentioned Mr. Sushil Chandra was heading the, the Central Board of Direct Taxes under which the Income Tax Department can when Shiva Kumar's residence was raided. And, and it, it's very, very interesting that Mr. Chandra is only the second officer from the Revenue Service to be appointed to the Election Commission. But what is also very, very interesting are these little little bits and pieces of information that are, that are coming out about how the money went, who it went to. It's meticulously detailed. It's meticulously detailed. Inflows as well as outflows. That's both. Correct. And I think even if these diaries, you know, meet the fate of the Jain Hawala diary or the Villa papers and the Sahara papers, for the time being, it severely dented the image that the BJP is trying to project in the run-up to the elections that, you know, they, they, are the, they are the guardian, they are the Chokidars in response to Rahul Gandhi accusing uh, Mr. Modi Chokidar Chor hai in the Rafael scandal. And, and it's all kind of, uh, I mean, all these words are coming back, I sense, in a sense, to haunt the Prime Minister, the same person who in the run-up to the elections would boast, na khaunga, na khane dunga, that neither will I accept any bribes, nor will I tolerate others accepting bribes. All of this is coming back today to haunt the BJP. You know, Beaufort's scam was only 65 crores. What we have is a diary which talks about 150 crores to the finance minister, 150 crores to one of the very other senior ministers in this list, Mr. Gadkari. And the amounts are put together. 1,000 crores for the BJP Central 18, Committee. About 1,800 crores. 1,800 And that crores. took 10 years ago, remember. These payments were made 10 years ago. So even if we take inflation, this is many times the size of, shall we say, Beaufort's, which was, of course, in the 80s. But coming back, you do think that this is going to at least create a temporary embarrassment, if nothing else, for the BJP? The gentlemen concerned who have been named, I think they have very thick skins. I don't know what they're going to do. I'm sure caravan won't be, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some court cases uh, uh, instituted against them. I think they've done their bit. What they said is that they sent uh, letters to Mr. Yadurappa, Mr. Arun Jaitley, Mr. Nitin Gadkari, Mr. Rajnath Singh, Mr. L.K. Advani, Mr. Murli Manohar Joshi, seeking their responses. And at the time the report was published, which is 22nd of March, these, none of the replies had come in and they're saying their reports will be updated if they respond. So they've tried to protect themselves. So it remains to be seen how the BJP reacts. Will they just pretend it hasn't been published, ignore it altogether and hope that the Godi media will shout and scream about something else and people will forget it. I think somewhere along the line, uh, they, they, this could also be a bit of wishful thinking. I think... Uh, We'll have to wait and watch. But uh, probably you and I never really had doubts about all these claims that were being made about how the BJP has not been complicit in big ticket corruption. I mean, we know that in this respect, the BJP has been no different from the Congress party when they accused him. And in fact, in this uh, iron ore export scam, it was happening not just 
in Karnataka, but in undivided Andhra Pradesh, which was at that point of time headed by a Congress Chief Minister, Y.S. Rajshekar Reddy, and, and his son, um, uh, Jagan Reddy, is now the leader of the opposition in the divided Andhra Pradesh. I mean, they all know exactly what was going on. Jagan Reddy, too, had to spend time behind bars. I think he was behind bars for about a year, unlike Gali Janathan Reddy, who was behind bars for about three years or thereabouts. It's a, across the border, and iron ore mines were on both sides, and it is also true that there seems to have been a business understanding between both the Reddy brothers and Rajshekhar Reddy and Chagan Reddy. As, as, as the, the late Gauri Lankesh had pointed out to me in the interview I did with them, they would play along with the state borders, you know. The markers, those mark stones, they would just move from here to there. Uh, anyway, and as, as, as uh, the CPM leader of, of, um, of, um, of Andhra Pradesh had pointed out, they didn't even, you know, the so-called Hindutva party didn't even care about a temple um, when they had to sort of, when they, re they figured out there was a lot of iron ore behind that ancient temple, they, they didn't think twice about finish it, finishing it off. And, and uh, Mr. B. Raghavalu of the CPM pointed out that the illegal miners had no qualms in demolishing an ancient temple because underneath that temple there was reserves of iron ore. Greed has no religion and as you have shown in your film, even the waters of that place had turned red. That was the extent of how much, apart from anything else, how much even destruction it created ecologically in that, in that place. So hard times for Mr. Yeddi again, it looks like, and maybe hard times for some of the leaders of the BJP. Thank you very much, Bollinger, to be with us, explaining to us the roots of this, not just the diary alone. Thank you for being with us. Do keep watching NewsClick.